Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. This time we're going to be using a different program. We're going to be using a program called Inkscape. Inkscape is a vector-based program very similar to other programs like uh, Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW. Uh, the main difference between Inkscape and these other programs is that Inkscape is absolutely free. That's right, Inkscape is what's called open source software, which basically means that a community comes together and programs a, uh, some software. The uh, source code is uh, open and available for public use, and basically the idea is that people will kind of come along, uh, improve it, fix bugs, and whatnot, but uh, that's on the programmer side. On uh, For the rest of us, we get to reap the benefits by having a free program that's actually really quite powerful. So, uh, if you swing by their website, it's at inkscape.org, and uh, you'll be land on this front page. And um, to download the uh, program, you just click the little download button now button, and it's going to automatically start downloading to your desktop. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this since I've already downloaded it and installed it on my computer. But uh, while you're over at Inkscape, uh, be sure to check out their website. They have a lot of really great information here. Uh, they have an FAQ. They have some uh, uh, documentation, kind of like a user's manual. They have tutorials. And they even have free clip art that you could download and use. So it's a really great website. Uh, if you even have any questions, you could even ask in their, uh, uh, their message boards or even uh, use their wiki. Uh, to find uh, some some techniques that you might not already know how to use. So I'm going to go over to Scroll Saw Village. I'm going to look into their pattern library. And let's go into the new patterns. And let's just find a good pattern to work with. Um, this uh, buck in water, designed by one of our members, Clayton. It's a real nice pattern, so let's go ahead and work on this. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and it gives me the full-sized image. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and save image as, and I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Click OK, and close this up. Okay, so now we have our brand new document, and it opens up a brand new document, and uh, you'll see your little piece of paper right in the center of the screen. Now by default, this will be an A4 size sheet of paper. Uh, I don't work with A4 size. I live in the US, so I like to work in letter size, which is 8.5 by 11. So the easiest way to change that is just come up to File, come up to Document Properties. Let me bring this over so you can see what's going on. And this is the Document Properties dialog box. Now one thing you'll notice is you won't see a OK or a Cancel button down at the bottom. That's because when you select any one of these, as you can see in the background, it automatically updates. So I'm going to select US letter, and when I'm done, I'll just go ahead and close up that dialog box. And now we have our work area set up for us, and uh, anything that's on this piece of paper will be what will be printed. So let's go ahead and import our image, the uh, pattern that we just uh, downloaded. So I'm going to come up to File. I'm going to come to Import, and we see right here, Buck and Water is what we just downloaded. Let me scooch, scooch this to the side a little bit, so you, over here you can kind of see a little preview here. And uh, if that's the right one, just go ahead and click Open, and what that does is it imports it into your document. Now this would be a good time to talk about how to navigate around your document. Uh, on to the side here you have scroll bars and you have a scroll bar down here and that kind of allows you to pan around and over here we have a magnifying glass so if you click that you'll see like a little plus sign in the middle that means you're zooming in in order to zoom out just hold down the shift button and then click you'll see a little minus button and that'll zoom out so I'm gonna zoom out so I can see the entire picture uh, let me show you another tool. This uh, little arrow tool is a selector tool. As you can see, uh, when we select that, uh, we're selecting the actual picture that we just imported. So I'm going to kind of pull this off to the side a little bit just so we kind of see our, 
our paper as well as the graphic we just downloaded. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, what we're going to do is uh, turn this bitmap picture into a uh, vector file. Now a vector, vector file basically is a mathematical representation of a photo. And uh, one of the benefits of vector files is that you could uh, shrink them down and you could enlarge them as much as you want without losing any resolution. Uh, one of the problems that uh, you'll find when finding scroll saw patterns on the internet is often that they're pretty small files and there's a number of reasons why people do that. Uh, some of it is to save bandwidth and uh, especially in the MSN groups uh, they had um, uh, file restrictions. Uh, you only had uh, three megs I think to uh, upload files and patterns and uh, once you reach your three megs uh, you're not allowed to upload anymore. Uh, so to get around that a lot of people just kind of kept the file size pretty small uh, which usually means that the actual pattern if you printed it out just like that will often not be the right size and sometimes you'll find jagged edges or fuzzy edges which sometimes will make it kind of difficult for you to actually cut. But if we take this and we create a vector file from it uh, we could enlarge it and or shrink it down and not lose any quality and uh, makes it a little bit easier to cut. And in order to do that I'm just going to go ahead and select the picture. If you come up to path click trace bitmap and you're going to get this little dialog box. I really wouldn't worry about any of these options really right out of the box works just as good as any. I just click OK and in a couple seconds uh, it'll create a vector program or a vector um, file out of that. So make sure our uh, selector tool is selected and as you can see if I pull this to the side we now have two copies. Uh, the one that I just pulled over is our brand new file and this is our old file. Well we don't need the old file anymore so I'm just going to go ahead and select it and hit delete and this is our new file. Uh, I think what we probably should do next is um, uh, go ahead and scale the image. Uh, obviously this is uh, pretty big. Uh, to find your image size information is right up here on the toolbar. Uh, you see right here it says it's a little over 1400 pixels wide. See the PX is pixels and 1700 pixels tall. Um, Pixels don't really mean much to me, so we're going to go ahead and change the format to inches. Okay, there we go. So now we have a, a pattern that's about 19 inches tall, about 15 and a half inches wide, much too big for me. So I personally like to work at a uh, image size of uh, about 8 inches by 10 inches, mostly because it's easy to find frames. So we're going to go ahead and scale this thing down. Now when you have the pointer sele uh, the selector tool uh, selected your image, you'll see these little arrows on the corners here. And what that does is it allows us to rescale an image. But as you could kind of see there, I could kind of squish it one way. I could also squish it the other way. And uh, it really just kind of distorts the image. And we don't want to distort the image at all. We want it exactly the way it is. And one way we got to do that is to lock the aspect ratio. So basically if we uh, shrink it a certain percentage on the horizontal axis, we also shrink it the same amount on the vertical axis. And in order to do that it is just as easy as clicking the little lock button. And this will lock the aspect ratio. So now we could go ahead and grab the corner and you could see it shrinks it equally on the horizontal as well as the vertical axis. Now we could kind of keep an eye up here on these numbers here and just kind of eyeball it in there and try to get it at uh, 8 by 10. Uh, I like to have a little bit more control over it so all I got to do is uh, select the number and I could just type in any number so I want it 10 inches tall hit return and as you can see there it shrunk it down for me. Uh, unfortunately it says it's a little over 8 inches wide so uh, let's go ahead and change that to 8 inches wide hit return 
and it shrinks it down a little bit. So now it's about eight inches by just shy of 10 inches tall. Um, I like to have a little bit more border around my entire image, mostly because the frame uh, overlaps the image a little bit. So I think a quarter inch on each side. So I'm going to take it down to seven and a half. So 7.5 inches wide. And there we go. And that's the exact size that I want. Okay. So basically now we have a size pa uh, pattern. It's the exact same size that we want. And we could just go ahead and print this now and uh, be done with it. But I like to take it a step further. The way I like to have my patterns is I like to have a gray pattern with a black outline. That makes it a little bit easier for me to follow the lines. It's just a little bit easier for me to see. And uh, I don't know, I, I just like the way that cuts. Uh, some people will even do like a gray pattern with a blue outline and that way they can see the outlines a little bit better. Any which way you like to work, it doesn't really matter, whatever works for you. But I like the gray pattern with a black outline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pattern and I'm going to select the gray. I'm just going to click it. And as you can see, it changed the color to gray. Uh, now I need to add a black outline. Now if I hover over the black, if I click it with the left mouse button, obviously it's going to turn the pattern black. We don't want that, so we want the gray. Uh, what I want is black outline. So if I come over to the black and I right click, it's going to pop up a little dialog box right down here. It says either set fill, which is basically the color of the pattern, or set stroke. Stroke basically means outline. So I'm going to select stroke and uh, it added an outline. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I'm going to grab the little magnifying glass and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, we now have a gray pattern with a black outline. And it's just that easy. So now I have my pattern pretty much the, exactly the way I want it. So let's go ahead and center it on the page and uh, get ready to print and we'll be done with it. So I'm going to hold down the shift button so we can zoom out. So we get the little minus sign. I'm going to zoom out. Just like that. I'm going to use the scroll bar. And what we got to do have to do is grab our little pointer tool again to select our pattern. And uh, now we could just kind of stick this in there somewhere and eyeball it and call it good enough. But uh, like I said, I like to have a little bit more control over it. So I'm going to show you a different technique. Uh, we're going to use an align and distribute tool, which basically tells you, uh, it allows you to indicate how you want to um, line things up basically. So I'm going to click up here. It's called Align and Distribute Objects. And what that's going to do is going to pull up like a little sidebar. You have Align here relative to, you have a lot of different options. Uh, selected I think is uh, what it defaults to. Uh, but we want to center it in the page. So I'm going to select Page. And right here we have Center on the Vertical Axis. If we click that you can see it snaps right over to the center of the page. And right here we have center on the horizontal axis. So if we click that, it pops it up again. And now it's perfectly centered in my 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And now all, uh, all you're left with is just uh, coming up to File, Print, selecting your printer, printing it off, attaching it to the wood, and start cutting. So, I hope this was kind of informative. Uh, I use this program all the time when I'm uh, preparing documents for, uh, uh, or patterns for printing. Uh, and it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility and uh, a lot more accuracy. And uh, it can kind of customize it, uh, uh, your patterns, the way you prefer to cut. Uh, so, we're going to go ahead and call it good for this time. Uh, next time, I'm going to kind of continue on uh, by using Inkscape, and we're going to use Inkscape next time to um, uh, prepare a large document or a large pattern for printing, something that's not going to fit on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. So let's say you want to um, uh, print off a uh, 11 by 14 inch pattern. I'm going to show you how to do that next time on Scroll Saw Goodies. 
So come back next time and uh, we'll show you how to do that. Uh, until then, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can shoot me an email at scrollsawgoodies at gmail.com or you can leave a comment in the blog post uh, or you could swing over to the forums at scrollsawvillage.com. Uh, we just implemented a brand new wiki which uh, will have uh, just about everything you need to know about scroll sawing or we hope that there will be everything that you need to know about scroll sawing included in the wiki but it is a, uh, uh, a continuing effort. So until next time, happy scrolling.